I've opened a session called Dubstep. I didn't give you an exercise file for this because I want you to open it from your system. So go to File, Create New, check the box that says Create from Template. The template group you want is Music, and Dubstep is down there in the Ds. Wave 24441 is fine. Interleave, check it or not, doesn't matter. We're not going to be creating new audio, so it's kind of a moot point. I'll just cancel out of here. You, though, are going to create this and then give it a destination, and you'll have your session open in Pro Tools. So this is one of the cooler templates that ships with the new version of Pro Tools, and it sounds like this. So lots of sounds going on. Let me scroll down. So I'm going to switch to the Smart Tool. To show you that, we're going to do some MIDI editing here. If I click on a note, it jumps me to the MIDI editor. Now I can resize this page, get a whole page of MIDI editor, but as you can see, they thought that a smaller editor would be enough. And of course, you can position this anywhere you want. Now you have a bunch of open windows, and sometimes you're going to want to save a configuration. So once you get things arranged the way you like them, make a new configuration, and then you can choose that anytime you like. So notice that we have a smaller version of the header here with the editing modes over here and the patch we're editing here. So we can switch tools in here, which would be different than the tool we're using back in the edit window. Some things are similar, some things are a little different here. When I clicked on this region, it sent me straight to the editor, this graphical user interface type editor. If you prefer editing your MIDI as a list, then you'd want to go to Setup, Preferences, switch over to MIDI, and then double-clicking a MIDI clip opens and switch to the event list. Say OK. Now, when I click on this, I get to a list where I have the start time, the location, the down velocity, the up velocity, and the length of every MIDI note or event in my project. There's yet another way to edit these. That would be the score window, if you prefer editing this way. It takes a second to launch this. Lots of blank space, and then there's our notes when the choir sings later on. So three ways to edit your MIDI data. I kind of like the graphical editor when I'm trying to find something weird, sometimes it'll stick out on the event list much easier than it will on the editor. Let's listen to the beat part of this. And zoom in. I'm going to double click here. So let's say that I didn't want that little bubba dump, that second kick hit. I want one kick hit here. So we can mute a note, or we can delete it, or we can change its pitch. So maybe that's the one I like. Now, in slip mode, you got to be careful because this note will move around, undo it, and get it back to its original place. Sometimes grid is the way to move the notes, and then they don't slide around in space. Remember, because it'll jump from one tick to the other. Let me undo that. Let's bring it up here and see what that sounds like. So then it's not quite so clumsy of a kick part. Undo that, move it back down here. Another option is to just change the velocity of that note. It's still going to be that pitch, that sound, and it's still going to be in that place. But why don't we have it just play a little softer? So we went from the 108 neighborhood down to the half of that, you know, 40 something. And now let's see what that sounds like. And let's do a little more of that even, just so it's like a ghost note there. Okay, split the difference somewhere in the 30s. just some precise MIDI editing that you can do in this MIDI editor. 
I wanted to show you that it's pretty easy to create another part from an existing part. Here's the hi-hat. I'm going to create a new instrument track, shift command N or shift control N on a PC. And I want an instrument track. I'm going to bring it up there where the hi-hat is. There's the hi-hat. I'll bring him just below that. Let's call this hat echo. I'm going to click on this clip in the timeline and select everything in that track. Option or Alt click and drag it down to another track. So now I have a double iteration of this hat, but I want this clip to start halfway between that note and that note. Let's listen. Okay, and I'm not hearing this part. It's also grayed out. That tells me that even though I have notes here, they're not playing because there's no device dedicated to play them. Let's go back to the mix window and see that I've created a track, but I don't have this virtual instrument on this track. And so it's got data, but it doesn't know what to do with it. So I made a mono audio track, a mono instrument track, and it wants to have a stereo. Shift Command N, there's a stereo instrument track. We can take this hat echo, cut it, cancel, go here, paste. How about two Ks? So then I'm going to control on the bad track. Just take all these guys and move them down one. And then I can delete this track. I'm going to option or alt click on a PC and drag that plugin over. Now, if I jump back, it's not grayed out anymore. Let's hear how this hi-hat sounds by itself. Then let's hear what the echo sounds like. So I think I want one tick over. And then let's put this a little echo effect, but much softer. And let's hear it in context. Okay, so that's how to make parts out of parts that are already there. Just copy them, make sure that there's a voice attached to it, and then slide them around and improve on the groove without actually touching anything in the original. And that gives you the option of making these a little bit softer or louder, or maybe panning them a little differently. You might want the echo to be straight up and down where the original parts are panned or vice versa. I picked on purpose a sound with no pitch, just a hi-hat part. So you can obviously do this with pitch instruments too. And we'll do that in an upcoming movie when we track something.